Hello and welcome back. I am Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some more of our Golden Horde campaign in Europe Universe House 4. Don't worry, we're playing Iron Man. It's not like I'm trying to save scum this battle or anything. So that's not happening. We have loans. We owe 192 ducats. We have negative 8 ducats a month in income. Our finances are looking a little bit bleak. Uh, we raised all those provinces and then I, you know, I, I don't even want to know how many Diplo points I wasted by not paying attention to the thing. We probably could have I don't know, bumped up even higher development in Sarai, which is now uh, probably our most developed province, if I had to guess. Take a look. Our total development is, uh, yeah, Sarai has 27. Next highest is Astrakhan, followed by Tambov. Our capital itself in uh, Saratov is only 9, <laughs> which is pretty bad. Okay, uh, well, anyway, let's do our battle. Oh, and uh, the other thing, right, of course, gotcha. Alright, good idea to get those started, right? Let's see. You're not ahead of time, but the institution cost is uh, something that I'm still trying to avoid. Convert Udmurtia to Sunni. It's different from the other one, I think. Conversion cost is... Oh, come on, tell me what the cost would be. For crying out loud. Negative 0.3, that's very doable. First phase, we rolled a 3. But we care mostly about the shock phase. A 4 versus a 5, we've got our uh, a shock bonus. You know, Nomads actually have some of the easiest times, I think, with Rebels, because... Because Rebels never get the shock penalty, the shock advantage. They get your, they get your tactics, they get your discipline, they get your... All kinds of stuff, but they don't, they do not get your shock, your shock advantage. What's this then? Ramazan. Looks like the Ottomans are trying to uh, take back their territory. Ooh, that's the one. That's the big one now. Ottomans versus Mamluks. Interesting. Ahmad the first. We don't want to actually keep him appointed because he will cost us two stability if he dies while doing a siege. So let's unappoint him. Oh, so keep somebody appointed. Don't suffer any attrition right now. Did he end up a siege value? Master Recruiter is dead. That was our level 2 guy. We had hired from the tribes. I don't really want to spend money. I don't want to contribute warriors either. Not really that concerned about their loyalty, honestly. I, I just want free cavalry every few years, that's all. Let's go ahead and... Uh, I pull off a few troops. It's so... It's frustrating seeing these discounts and still not being able to take the tech. I want the tech, man. Alright, we don't need to have maintenance for our armies right now. None at all. Because we won't suffer attrition sieging back our own territory. So long as there's no other rebellion, we're totally safe to just be sitting on, like, no maintenance, which is nice. We have another rival slot available that I have uh, yet to decide, yet to determine. Kara's pretty likely. The Ottomans haven't rivaled them. Timurids haven't rivaled them. Mamluks are the only one, and I don't care about the Mamluks, but... I just don't see much of a reason to really do the rivalry right now. We can at least wait a couple years before we have to decide. The only real reason to have maintenance above zero would be if we want to reinforce, which I do. Let's go ahead and reinforce for a couple months. The fact that reinforcement's free is such a powerful advantage. Poland has declared war on the Teutons. Okay, this is war number two, I think. I'm not sure. Invert Udmur Sunni. Save the Mishar people in Kazimov. Well, if he lost his leader, I'd, I'd consider it, but uh, I think this conversion one's going to be a good option. We've got like five or six provinces now to convert. be a good idea to get our religious unity back up. We're at uh, 89% right now. Kazan has just allied the Timurids. Okay. That's fine. Doesn't really matter too much. 
We're gonna get our one claim on Kazan, and then we're gonna do the, the return core here. Total war score cost to you is uh, 86%. So if I take 86%, minus the 22, and then multiply it by 0.75 because of the, the Cass's belly, the total war score cost for taking back all of No Guy's core is gonna be 47. I should totally be able to take this. I'll pay. I'll end up paying some diplo points for it, but in the next war we can eat Kazan completely, make him dead. I think it's going to be the right approach rather than doing it in two separate wars. The sooner he's dead, the better. Nobody likes him anyway. All right. As long as corruption is below 0.5, I, I checked the game files, and unless they've changed it, there's no advantage to being at, at, at exactly zero versus being at 0.05, uh, 0.5, so. <laughs> Shady people has expired. We're going to get another pulse event in a moment then. Alright, so we could totally embrace feudalism, like, right now, if we wanted to. We could take out some loans, pay the 363.87 ducats. But, um, it does seem to me... Again, I find it very strange that, that uh, partially in... Partially embraced locations don't reduce the cost at all. Autonomy does, but partially embraced doesn't. Curious, very curious. It's so, like this province here, Sarai. It's 27 gold times 2.5 times our corruption. Times 1.5. 007. So 67.98 ducats is what it should be. 68.9. Yeah, 67.52. It's a tiny bit less than I projected, and it's probably because you have a little bit of autonomy. Yeah, that's why. It's not exactly 27 development, it's different. What are they clocking it in at? 60... 26.37. So ironically, and that, that must be where in my first campaign where I was confused why the cost was actually going up each month. And the reason is that autonomy coming down means that there's more development that you have to pay for. Even though many of your provinces might be progressing toward it, the cost goes up because your autonomy comes down. I don't get that. They... It should work the way I thought it would. If you have half of the feudalism embraced, you're paying for the remainder, aren't you? I, I don't know. Whatever. It is what it is. Just in case there's a disease outbreak, let's not take more troops here than we need. It's a level 2 fort. Let's only use 6 troops. 6,000 men. Of course we have no siege leader, right? All right, Mr. Timurids, how are we going to deal with the fact that you've re-allied yourself with Kazan? How goes your war, by the way? Oh, that's lovely, suffering 5% attrition. This is smart, smart, it's good, it's a good idea. Ottomans on tech 555 versus the Mamluks 455. Here's our fort back, let's go down to no maintenance again. I think we're probably fully reinforced, yep. It's pretty good. 284 manpower a month? Wow. That's impressive. Considering I'm, I'm not... I don't consider my, my country to be very strong right now, and yet... That's pretty good. I like that a lot. Okay. Ottomans still want my provinces, but they are pretty happy with me overall. We still have consort marriage ties. Of course, we uh, did do a royal marriage again, but royal marriage is already in there. So the consort marriage ties, I just don't understand why that's still here. Is their consort my 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 guy? Is that what it is? Can I see your consort? I can see your heir. Ottomans have a unique government type. <laughs> what? <laughs> my con no guy has sent Kazan an insult. Good job, no guy. You learn from the best. Nice work. We are kin. Plus 38. 
It's very nice. Uh, we actually have the same dynasty as Kazan right now. Interesting. Timurids has started to influence the nation of Kazan. Okay, so... I wrote opinion of Kazan, it's this way. Group relations and then just direct plus 25, great power influence. How close are we? We're probably not very close. Actually, we're not too bad. 286 development. It's just it's just the technology cost. Beyond that, we could we could totally break into that top layer. Top eight. What are we doing on war exhaustion? War exhaustion's gone. Wars? Yeah, they're coming in pretty quick. Penza came in a little bit quicker because we had the claim. These other ones came in because they were accepted culture group. And then these two over here, Ud Udmurtia and Perm, are not in the same culture group as our capital, as our accepted cultures. That's why they cord slower. The default coring speed is 36 months, 3 years. It gets cut in half if it's in your culture group. This is just information that I've learned from playing the game way too much. Um, it doesn't say it anywhere in there, right? Like, why it's shorter. <laughs> but that's what it is. 36 months default, cut in half if it's your culture, minus 10% extra if, it's, if you have a claim. In general, same culture, same, like, having a claim, those things are good. We could do a quick war with, with, with Ryazan. He has embraced feudalism, so these provinces would be... Not, de not detrimental to us at all. He is orthodox. Our aggressive expansion with you is irrelevant. Once your province is negative 200. Yeah. I'm not very surprised. But if you're not going to defend him, and we don't have the overextension to worry about, we might as well just go kill this guy. Let's do it. We're actually able to make some money. Notice that we were actually not losing money there for a moment. And we're losing two ducats a month to rooting out corruption. Once the cores, the overextension's gone, we'll actually be totally fine, I think, for finances for now. Once the cores are done, we're actually going to probably spend some development on bumping up Bash Bashgeard. Make some profit out of this thing. Also, we got to readjust the tribes, give them some land. The great power of Austria has forced Nuremberg to break their alliance with Alsace. Alright. Fair enough. We've got uh, Step to work with. No leader. Eight in the front. Eight in the front with our flanking ability. We need to use uh, 12 troops. So, I mean, if we have 12 cav, we just use 12 cav. We've got uh, 13, so yeah, let's just use per cav. Because we can, 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 right? Yes, we can, can, can. All right, some cores have come online. Probably the probably the claim be my guess. Ugh. Attrition. This is glorious, however, in the eyes of God, which means that we are going to gain piety, which. Might actually be the reason why we're um, making some money right now. Yeah, I'm going to do it anyway, though. It's, it's a good opportunity for it. We need to do it. Uh, conquest is 100, 100, 100. Tribal superiority is less aggressive expansion, so we'll do tribal conquest. And let's make this go as quick as we can here. Somehow, he actually managed to afford a, a fort, which is kind of garbage. We're going to intercept him before he can leave, so that's a good sign. Let's go top off relations still a little bit more with Theodoro. We're still trying to make this guy loyal at some point. Even returning his cores to him wouldn't work. If we want it, whoa, 1,430 troops this early in the game? That is such a crush. Nine versus zero with a shock advantage. Holy crap. 1,430, just bam, like three days dead. That was awesome. Glorious. Good job, Ahmad. I, I approve of this. 
Since we have no cost of reinforcement, our troops are exactly equal to each other, so there's really no issue whatsoever with, um, sieging with Cav. However, we will go down to, like, half-maintenance. Hmm. I think shift consolidating still does make sense, even though in many cases we would prefer for them to uh, to reinforce a little bit faster. Also, even though this is going to slow the siege down, I want to pull the leader off so we don't suffer a uh, suffer an extra aggressive uh, ah words stability extra stability hit. And actually, come to think of it, stability would be a good idea right now for the technology institution spread rate. An extra 5%. It would cost quite a bit though. 128. Overextension is going to go away. The religious unity we can't really handle. It would also speed up our ability to convert. Might even bring some provinces up in a conversion range already. Udmurtia. Once that core is done in Udmurtia. It's only halfway done though. I think we got to hire an Inquisitor. Convert Udmutia. Possibly declare another war to get some more, uh... Uh, yeah, I think that's a good idea. There goes some of the aggressive expand- or the, uh... Overextension stability cost. A little bit again. Do I want to wait... Another 18 months before I... Take the stability? We do have rebel factions building up. The stability would help reduce that. The the Kazani separatists are actually pretty damn sizable. And this is going to be quite a bit of overextension from these provinces. But here's the thing. Bashkir just got cored. I can't core it further, but I can develop it. When do we gain more states? Admin Tech 5. Oh, we're so far away. Let's see. Are there any that I'd even... I, if there's a really good one in our in our country, and we have a really crap one, I would seriously consider... Like, okay, sort by development. The crappiest development. We've got Smolensk is a state with 7 development. That's so bad. Where the hell is Smolensk? This one over here, I, I turned this into a state. I shouldn't have done that. Okay, so the coring cost of this province is 70 admin points. It's 35 if you're paying for the territorial core. I can basically, ha I have a button available to me right now. The, the question we're asking ourselves is, would it be a good idea to click this button if it were an actual button? The button is, would you be willing to pay 35 admin points in order to pick up a state With 15 development, Kazan, for example, or more notably Bashgird, which uh, unfortunately has three provinces we don't own, but the gold mine, that's eight development that we could core and then get lower autonomy on and then develop. The eight development's kind of kind of crap. But the uh, the other one though, Kazan at fifteen. That one kind of makes you think. I really just want to get this gold mine online. You know what's kind of ironic is that the embracement cost of institutions is cheaper if they're in territories than if they're not. That doesn't seem right at all. Look at this. Take a province like, uh, let's find one on here. Let us Suvar. 126.75 from 20 other provinces. Naturally, the ones that I'm looking for aren't on this list. 
There's one, Etkara. Etkara, recently conquered. 20.57 ducats for 8 development. Normal cost would be 8... Wait, Etkara, that's... Maybe we have owned that for a while. Yeah, we have. <clears throat> My point is that because the autonomy is at 75%, it reduces the em embracement cost by 75%. Because the effective development's less. And yet you're still getting it fully embraced in a province that you could just then click a button and, and then now you have lower effective development. Autonomy. In fact, if you really want to embrace it quickly, there's even an argument for raising autonomy in all these provinces. If you have a... One would assume that if you have 100% autonomy, that there's zero embracement cost. So I can just raise autonomy in all these provinces, get rid of the unrest completely, and then embrace it for free. Which seems ridiculous. To me. I, I don't know. Having crap local autonomy shouldn't make things better. That's the exact opposite of what you would assume would be the way that it would work. High autonomy is supposed to be bad for you. I don't know. I don't get it. Anyway, um, I don't know if I'm gonna click that button or not. I really want that gold mine. I would really love to get this guy down to like... He, he's probably at like, um... Oh, I don't know. Probably somewhere around... Penza was one of the ones we had the claim on, so... It'd be at about... 47.6% autonomy right now. So we'd be making a little bit over double. That's like 0.25 ducats a month. It's not a huge amount, but I'd like to do it. I'm not going to spend admin points on it. I'm just going to wait. It's fine. Let's win this war. For now, I'm going to take a break here. I will be back, though. Same time. San just insulted no guy back. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you again soon. See you in a bit.